Hi, and welcome to twoquestions.tv. I'm your host, Susan Barancini Mo. Today, I'm taking on a slightly unusual topic, but I'm taking it on Equifax. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so Equifax. I'm taking this on because uh, over the weekend, I did some research on identity theft protection services, and I read up on this whole situation, and I've known a lot about sort of this whole ID thing for a while, and I thought, my audience maybe could benefit from this. So it's not usual for me to cover a current topic, but here I'm doing it. Okay, <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen on twoquestions.tv. All right, so question number one, what happened? And question number two, what can you do to protect your family? Okay, question number one, what happened? Well, Equifax is a company that is one of the three major credit monitoring, credit reporting bureaus. Um, and they were hacked between mid July or mid between mid May and July, and the data on 143 million of its customers was stolen. Now, if you think you're not a customer of Equifax and therefore are not among the 143 million people whose data was stolen, bad news. You probably are a customer of Equifax, whether you know it or not. Um, pretty much everyone is. So if you've ever had a mortgage or a car loan or you, you have had a credit card, sometimes a bank account, you probably have a credit report and therefore you're probably a customer of Equifax. So how can you tell if you were affected? You can go to this website right here, I'm gonna put it right here, to see if you were included in the hack because here's what happened. 143 million people's data was stolen and include their names, social security number, driver's license numbers, addresses, credit cards, and a lot more information. And um, it can be kind of obviously kind of bad for that to have happened, right? I mean, it's not just that people who have your credit card numbers can use your credit cards and buy stuff, and then you have to go through the, the rigmarole and the nightmare of having to fight that, but also they can open bank accounts in your name, they can commit medical fraud in your name, they can go to a hospital and say they're you, and who do you think gets that bill? You. And they can also redirect your mail so you don't get your bills. They can commit crimes in your name. And who do you think they come to arrest? You. So that can be kind of scary. I'm not trying to scare you, but there are a lot of potential scary things that can go wrong uh, when your ID gets stolen. So what can you do? You can go to the website, equifaxsecurity2017.com, and we're gonna put it right here-ish. Um, and that will allegedly tell you that you were included or not included, but here's the thing. That's the website that Equifax set up for all of us to go to and find out if we were affected. Now you have to put in your last name and the last six digits of your social security number. Super exciting when you've just potentially had your entire social security number stolen. Again, thanks Equifax. Um, so, so the problem is a couple, of, a couple of things happen. So you go to the website and you put in your last name and your social security number. The result comes back pretty quickly, which makes me personally think either they have crazy fast servers or they are just giving you kind of a random response. <laughs> so it will tell you like you have potentially been affected. Um, and it's hard to tell if they're really telling us the truth about whether our data was compromised. So if you were affected or potentially affected, um, we don't know for sure because some people, some articles came out over the weekend that some people were putting in fake last names and fake social security numbers to see what would happen. And they got a lot of different messages, most of which were you were potentially affected. So again, hard to know if Equifax Security 2017 is a reliable resource, but what happens is after you get the message that you're potentially affected, then Equifax says you can enroll in a year of our credit monitoring service. Now, a, that's super inadequate because this is a potentially lifelong threat. Why? Because when someone steals your credit card number, you can call Capital One or Chase or whatever your bank is and tell them, my credit card was stolen, please send out a new one and make that number, you know, cut it off. And they'll do that and you're pretty safe after that. But you can't do that with your social security number. That's a number for life. And as far as I know, you can't change your social security number. So um, this becomes an issue when, um, you know, after that year is up, then what happens? 
So um, the other thing that happened is some people have been sharing a couple of articles and, and information that says that if you're affected and you agree to the, your credit monitoring, then you're opting out of your right to class action suits later, to participate in those class action suits later. That is untrue. If you opt into the year of monitoring, you can still participate in class action suits later. That's not what that, there's a clause in the agreement for the credit monitoring service. It's, it does not refer to this particular breach. So if you want to go after Equifax later as a part of a class action suit, you can do that. You're not giving up that right just by signing up for that one year. But again, that one year is super inadequate. Okay, so question number two, what can you really do to protect yourself? One thing you can do is to freeze your credit. Now, this comes with a potential $5 to $10 charge for each credit bureau. So that's 15 to $30 total per person to freeze your credit. What that actually does is a little complicated. I'm gonna to link to an article in the notes for today so that you can find out not only what it means to do that, but also how to do it. This will not protect you from someone stealing your identity for other nefarious purposes, however. So you can freeze your credit, but that's not gonna protect you from all these other things that could happen and go wrong. Um, so there are these identity theft protection services, monitoring and, and protection. And so I wanna give you a, sort of a review of what your options are, uh, because I did spend quite a bit of time this weekend finding something that would work for my family. And I wanna help you find something that'll work for you. Please note, I have no relationship with any of the companies I'm mentioning. I will be linking to them in the notes, but they're not affiliate links. There's no relationship whatsoever here with these companies. I'm just trying to you know, create a video that's valuable and helpful to you, okay? so. Here's the rundown. If you have AAA, that wonderful company that will come and help you if you have a flat tire on the highway, um, AAA, your membership comes with Protect My ID by Experian, one of the other three credit agencies. Um, you get a basic membership. You can add on and upgrade to their deluxe membership for like $8.95 a month, and that will add on all three credit report monitoring um, so you're not just monitoring the Experian report. Now you can add on for nine bucks a month, you know, all three credit reporting. Um, and it also monitors internet scans, sort of looking for your data on the internet and some other stuff. Um, but again, I'm not personally feeling super trusting of the credit report agencies now, wondering if that's maybe not the best place for me to have my, um, I mean, I kind of wish they were already protecting my data and I feel like I shouldn't have to pay them to protect it more. Um, anyway, <laughs> AARP, if you have AARP, which you can have if you're, I think, 55 or older, um, they have Trusted ID, which is the Equifax plan, you know, the company that just let all your info get hacked. Um, they do have family and individual plans available, but I wouldn't even bother with Trusted ID at all because you're going to be getting a year of that for free anyway. So I just wouldn't bother with that one. Now, among the many options for identity theft protection, there are kind of three that I really liked. One is Identity Force, one is LifeLock, and one is ID Shield. Again, I have no relationship with any of these companies. I'm not, I'm not promoting anybody. I'm just saying this is what I learned when I did my research this weekend. Okay, Identity Force I like because it includes medical ID fraud protection. That means like, you know, look, scanning for, you know, someone using your identity when they're, you know, getting health care. Uh, they scan court records, blogs, databases, and other websites for your personal information. They don't have family plans, but their plans are like 18 to $24 a month. Um, that's identity force. LifeLock has plans that are 10, 20, and $30 a month, depending on how much protection you want, how much monitoring you want. They also include something nobody else includes, which is sex offender registry reports, which means if someone's using your identity and they get picked up and, and convicted as a sex offender and then have to register as a sex offender and they use your information, they stay on the lookout for that. LifeLock also has no family plans, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but again, they have, you know, three tiers of options. Um, the third option I liked was ID Shield. And I really like ID Shield because they have really affordable family plans. They include medical IDs and court records monitoring. 
they um, do this file sharing network monitoring where people might be sharing your information. They have a $10 individual plan and then um, they also have family plans, but they also offer something nobody else offers, which is identity restoration service. And I really like that. Like I, I like that they would help me if someone stole my identity. So what I'm wondering now is if we should have ID Shield and maybe one other of the programs. Like I kind of like that LifeLock includes a sex offender registry. Um, I like, you know, some of that. So I, I don't know yet if we're going to do two different plans or we're just going to stick with ID Shield. But um, but any of these three um, have excellent customer service, um, are are really easy to work with, and have good customer reviews. So those are my three picks. Um, another thing I want to recommend to you is I want to talk to you about your passwords. Um, I want you to change your passwords, but perhaps not in the way you think. And this could be the last time you ever change your passwords. What? How could that be true? Oh my gosh, you're crazy. No. Um, so many, many years ago, um, this guy named Bill Burr worked for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And he came up with the idea of creating these passwords that we all use today, where we use these crazy symbols and capital letters and numbers, and we mix them all up in some nonsensical thing, and uh, we change them frequently. Now, um, he has recently been going around to the Wall Street Journal on NPR. He has been um, you know, talking about the fact that the National Institute of Standards and Technology has recently changed their recommendation. Now they're saying, not only do you not want to do these crazy, nonsensical phrase like words that are made up of symbols and capital letters and stuff, but those are easily hacked in a few days. And you don't really have to change your password that often if you follow our new recommendations. And those are to create these um, easy to remember long phrases that are meaningful, things you'll actually remember. So one of the problems with these passwords that we've all created is who remembers that stuff, right? Like you create a password with eight or 10 random numbers and characters and digits, like who, who remembers those, right? Like you have to have like a special notebook. Some of my friends have special notebooks. Some, you know, I, I tend to use some of the tools that are available. There are a lot of ways that, um, that you can keep track of your passwords, but if you switch to the new recommendations, you actually don't have to keep track of anything because you'll remember it, and you don't have to change your password every certain number of days. Now, companies will still require us to do that because it'll take a while for this to filter into them, but the idea is to create long phrases that you'll remember, but here's the cool thing is they take hundreds of years to hack. That's awesome. So you don't have to hack, you don't have to um, create something you won't remember, create something you will remember, a relatively, you know, like maybe a four or five word phrase or sentence that you'll remember. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to change it unless you get an idea or someone tells you or you get notification that your password was stolen, you really aren't gonna have to change it all the time. So I'm gonna link to an article about that in the notes as well. So those are my two questions for today. Um, what happened with Equifax and what can you do to protect your family? If you have tips on how people can protect their families and you'd like to share it in the notes, I absolutely welcome that and would love to hear from you. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and like this video. And please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other episodes of twoquestions.tv. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.